12.3 solubility. Go on and uh, check out video problem 65 after this. All right. So solubility is basically how much solute can dissolve in a certain amount of solvent. And what we typically do is we typically ex express this in grams of solute per 100 grams of solvent. So think about a good science experiment. What do you always have? You always have just one variable, right? So we say 100 grams of solvent so that that's a control, right? We can't have another variable. We can only have the one variable. The variable that we have is the grams of solute. Okay, that's what we're purposefully changing. The solubility is basically the maximum amount of solute that is possible at that temperature to be dissolved. If we, if we can still dissolve some of that solute, we call it an unsaturated solution. If we have dissolved as much as possible, we call it a saturated solution. In a saturated solution, we're typically, we're going to have some solids set at the bottom, right? but you don't have to. So you can have, here's this, here's this solution, and we can say that it's saturated. And the only way that we can test that is we can take more solid and put it in there. And if we put more solid in there and it doesn't dissolve, then it's saturated. If we put more solid in there and it does dissolve, then it's unsaturated. Now, the amount that's dissolving, if we have some solid in there, so let's put some solid in there, some of that solid is constantly redissolving, and some of that solid is constantly crystallizing out. Okay, some of the so some of the solid is becoming dissolved, some of the dissolved particles is, is becoming solid. All right. So here's what we're talking about right there. We typically look at a solubility chart or a solubility graph here. And this can tell us basically at a certain temperature how much will actually dissolve. So let's take a look at one of these. Uh, this graph shows one, two, three, four, five, six different sets of experiments. So let's say we have 40 degrees Celsius and we're, let's say we're talking about sodium nitrate. So right there at 40 degrees Celsius, 100 grams of sodium nitrate will dissolve in 100 grams of water at 40 degrees Celsius. All right. Now if I increase the temperature, I can get more solid to dissolve. So at 60 degrees Celsius, 120 grams of water will dissolve. Or 120 grams of sodium nitrate will dissolve in 100 grams of water. Now let's take that. All right, let's say we do, we do that. We take 120 grams of sodium nitrate. We throw it into water at 60 degrees Celsius. But then let's say we lower that temperature of that water down to 20. Well, if we go come over here to 20, all right, this is how much we actually put in there. But this is how much will actually dissolve, right around 82 grams. So 82 grams will actually dissolve. So what will happen with this amount? Well. If it's, if it's a regular situation, then the difference between 120 and 82 will actually come out. So what is that, 18, uh, 48 grams, 38 grams. So 38 grams will actually come out and be set on the bottom of the beaker. So here's what we have at 60 degrees Celsius. We put 120 grams in there, and all of that dissolved. We then drop the temperature to 20 degrees Celsius, and then we're going to have 38 grams set on the bottom, while about 82 grams will be dissolved. Generally, the solubility of a solid increases with an increase in temperature, and that's what you can see all along here. And so all along this graph right here, all along this line for glucose, that's the amount of solid that it takes for it to be saturated. Okay? Anything below that line at that temperature is unsaturated. Now, a gas is different. The solubility of a gas will decrease with an increase in temperature. So if we have... Uh, I don't have it. If we have a solid or if we have a solution here, 
okay, let's say uh, soda, right? So some sort of a cola. We have carbon dioxide that's dissolved. If we warm that up, okay, so if we warm that up, it's supposed to be a Bunsen burner, then that carbon dioxide that's dissolved will come out of solution, so it'll bubble out. And think about a soda on a warm day versus a soda on a cold day. On a cold day, that soda will stay carbonated, right? will stay bubbly longer than on a warm day. Right. Now, uh, I'll give you another example here. So here's a lake, right? And on that lake sets a uh, factory, right? So a factory is taking water in, right? Using the water, and uh, let's say it's generating electricity, and then spitting the water out. Now the water comes out at a higher temperature. Well, at that higher temperature, there's less oxygen that's dissolved in this in the water that means that there are going to be fewer fish in that immediate vicinity over here if it's colder it's going to be more oxygen dissolved and more fish are going to hang out around there okay now if you want let's go back to our soda here if we want this uh, carbon dioxide to redissolve we have to increase the amount of carbon dioxide that's directly over it. So we have to increase the pressure due to carbon dioxide. Then we can get the carbon dioxide to redissolve. Just pumping air over it is not going to make it redissolve at all. Okay? So typically with gases, let me draw you a graph here. Typically with gases, we see something that looks like this. That as the temperature increases, the grams of solute dissolved decreases. Okay? Now, some ionic salts are what are called insoluble salts. An insoluble salt is one of those weak electrolytes. So in other words, only a little bit of it actually dissolves and only a little bit of it actually breaks up. So here's generally how it works. That here's a solubility table, okay? Everything on this side of the solubility table is soluble. Which means that all of these are strong electrolytes that when we throw them into water, they break up completely. Now, all of these are weak electrolytes so that when we throw them into water they do not dissociate completely and they they exist mainly as the molecule okay, so something like sodium chloride which has the sodium ion and the chloride ion versus something like silver chloride which has the silver ion and the chloride ion Okay, there we go.